Emory aka Ian Fresh back here again. Today we got a quick one for you. Today we're going to be installing a uh, an access dropper post on my my wife's new Trek Super Caliber. All right. Okay, so here's the Super Caliber. She just got it from Trek. All right, but it did not come for, come with the dropper post. So today, with her help, my wife's help, she's going to install the dropper post on her own. So this is an access electronic dropper post. All right, the tools we need. So hello, uh, Jerry Ann. Hello. Okay. So what tools do we need to take off the dropper post? Oh, he doesn't know. So what you need is a torque wrench here, and so. We're gonna have a five uh, nanometer or uh, millimeter adapter on the torque wrench. And then I'm going to set the, uh, the torque value, which really doesn't matter when you're taking it off, but when you're putting it back on, you want to make sure that you have the torque uh, set correctly. See this little red line there? I'm turning it up to 16, so when I put it back on, I don't over tighten it and then break the or strip the bolt on the uh, seat post there. So it's at 16 here, and that's 16 nanometers of torque. Newton meters, not nanometers. Newton meters of torque. Okay. Was it? Like if you hold it, you need to flip this little lever the other direction so you can untighten it. Okay, so put it on there, and then untry to. You can only go one direction. Okay, so okay, you pull it back. There we see. Ah, see the cool tools that you have. You know that you can use. Get the other one. There's two of them on there, Jerry. There's one on the other side. Okay. Is that for safety? Why they make it so tight? Yeah, you don't want it to, or you don't want it to just come off or flip flip or have the seat come down. You know like on the uh, electric, how it bends down. Which one? Yeah. Okay. 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 All right, now the seat, to get the seat post screws out by just hand holding it. So. What you can do, Jerry, is stick that screw when I was back in here. Don't have to tighten, but just stick to it, it's in there. Just a little bit, don't do it all the way. Right there, okay. Axis dropper post there. Okay, and the show, show, point there, the dropper post to it. Let me see, let me see the. Okay, this has 30, 390 millimeters of travel right here. And the other one was 400. On the other. So we wanna make sure it matches. You wanna be under the old dropper post so, that, so it doesn't hit these screws down here. Okay, so go ahead and put. So when you say that, just for an explanation, are you talking about the length of the drop? Yeah, the length. Okay. See here? Mm -hmm. so that one's 400 millimeters, and this is 390. And it was hard to find this particular dropper post. It was like sold out because I guess not too many people put dropper posts in these. So I had to order from this off the wall company in California. I was afraid I wasn't going to get it because it was kind of a shady looking website, <laughs> but they sent it to me. Okay, so you're going to stick it in there. Does it matter which direction? Look at it and see which way is the battery at. Should it be greased at all? Hmm? Should it be greased at all? You know, actually it should. And uh, what we're going to do is, uh, you don't really need to, but I do. Well, if you're a bigger person like myself, Jerry probably doesn't need to, to put any carbon grip compounds, what you call it, uh, on the post so it gives it more uh, grip on it. Like It's like you're putting sandpaper, a light coat of sandpaper on the post here. So that's what we're gonna do. If you're a bigger person, you're gonna need it because otherwise, you know, you hit a hit a pothole or whatever, or something, you know, like knock it out of true, even though you might have it pretty tight. Okay, you wanna use the carbon and alloy assembly grip compound. So it will grip that like exactly like how it says exactly what it does it makes it as you notice there's a minimum insertion point so if you put it in you gotta at least put it past that point here put this lube on it like this okay might not have seen that and, and, it, then she, and then she's gonna rub it all around 
a ventilator. Okay. Try not to get it down in here. Don't get it down in that little piece there. Okay. Yep. Okay, so now you're going to put it inside the... All right, so you can stick it in there. This is going to work because it's a little bit... I don't think I want it. Okay. Because you want it as far down as possible. Mm -hmm. You want your dry post to go as far down as possible. Yeah, it won't go down anymore. Okay. That's fine. All right, so now you're going to tighten it back up. All right, we're tightening it up. Tighten the screw. Just a little bit or hard? All of because you don't want it to move because you're okay. trying to put the seat on. Okay, okay. that's good, that's good. All right. All right. Looks like the truck gives you pretty good bolts. Just don't strip. You're going to put your what, seat post inside these bars here, okay? Come out. You want to pull them out just enough, pull these screws out just enough to get the bars in from your seat. Okay, and actually you should put that carbon stuff on this on those bars too, I forgot. Okay, good. Just on the metal part, right? Say that again, what you're doing? Just, is it on the metal Yeah, part? on the metal, because that's, it's going to attach to the, uh, in the side here. It doesn't matter if it dries, but you want it to actually dry on. Have it dry before you put it on there. Because all it's doing is creating like a sandpaper. Okay. Like a grip. Okay, good. Alright, so now, you're going to, you're doing a good job as a mechanic. All right, now what are you going to do? Okay, if you look on the side, you always look for these numbers on the side. It says 12 newton meters. Okay, there we go. I think that's good. You should be able to get in there. I can tell. The left side definitely should be able to get in. Now the seat is pointing down. We're going to adjust that, correct? Yeah, to so the front. See that little hole? It says tilt. See? There's an arrow going. If you go, to the left, it goes, I think to the right, it goes forward, and then to the left, it goes backwards. But you have to, to uh, there you go. See how it's moving on its own? See how it's going back? You don't even have to touch it, it'll just go back. Okay. There you go, right there. You're gonna go plop. Yep. You don't right. go anymore. And it's not gonna move, see? All right. On your other one. Okay, uh, in this clip here, I just sped up a little bit. Uh, all Jared's doing is installing the uh, installing the uh, uh, the actuator for the dropper post, and uh, because this is a uh, Shimano brake uh, has Shimano brakes on it or base brakes, uh, the matchmaker clamp that comes in the box for the uh, Axis Reverb dropper post does not fit on the brake, so we had to use a separate uh, clamp there. And so that's what the problem is here. We had to, to install the separate adapter that came with it. But nevertheless, it works with every single brake. And also the seat post clamp on this particular version is uh, 31.6, so make sure your seat post clamp matches. Bike to the app. Okay, and now once I forgot to get the uh, clip of the actually working. So uh, once you get it installed, Jerry had gotten installed, here's the uh, actuator here. Uh, you have it, you, we got it paired. And so all you do is you press it, and this is electronic, there's no wires coming through this. And uh, you just press the button. Bam, see that come out, come out. It just pops right up, no wires, really fast. Okay, sorry about that. It was, uh, I was into putting the dropper post on and I forgot to hit record on the camera, but that's, thank you for watching. And uh, this is how you uh, install a Axis uh, Reverb by SRAM dropper post, uh, electronic dropper post on the uh, Super Caliber, the Trek Super Caliber.